Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. Welcome to the Los Angeles Auto Show. And well, I'm super lucky. I get to go to a ton of auto shows, but something you guys have always asked is like, why don't you take us on a tour and just share what you look at? You guys know I love car spotting. I love finding new things. I love learning about cars. Here, there are a lot of engineers on this day. It's still before the actual show. So a lot of the company representatives are here. There's cool cars everywhere. So let's just go for a walk around. I'm gonna share my impressions on everything here. Uh, there's a huge show, tons of cars, tons of stuff. Let's go for a quick tour of the LA Auto Show, Kyle style, got the Starbucks. Well, we just walked in the entrance here and first off, bam, EV6. <laughs> now we're super lucky. We were able to review this vehicle in Europe and uh, really enjoyed driving EV6, of course, around Munich and other places. It was really neat. Um, but I'm already noticing some differences on this particular car. You can see this sort of serrated edge around the, um, the wheel arches. That's pretty interesting. I don't know. The car that we drove was a Euro spec car. My understanding is they'll do some suspension adaptation to our market. So yeah, I can't wait to drive a US spec car. They claim they just set the Guinness Book of World Record of charging and it was like seven hours or something across the country Yeah, seven hours, 10 minutes. I'm pretty sure we beat that New York to Los Angeles in our Taycan run, but Guinness didn't verify it. So that's dumb. Come on, Kia, read some stuff. We'd, I think ours was around five hours and yeah, Taycan is capable of, I won't say the exact number, but yeah, a lot less than even that if you drive slowly. You'll hear no news on that one day and it, I think it'll be a Guinness thing. Anyway, I'm not gonna say too much. Let's go over here to Subaru. For those of you who don't know, I live in Colorado. There's Subarus everywhere. I'm, I love Subarus. I have a great impression of the brand. We've never really worked with the company on the media side. We've never reviewed them. Um, and that's mainly because we don't have too many Subarus that come to Colorado for some reason. So look at this, the best part, puppies. <laughs> there are dogs in here and you can play with puppies. And that's like the most Subaru awesome thing ever. But take a look at this display. We just watched the Solterra uh, come out and be revealed. It's their new electric car. So that seems pretty interesting. Again, we're gonna talk a lot about EVs in this video, but also a lot about combustion vehicles. So let's just go around and yeah, you can see Solterra's up there, which is super, super cool. You have the Outback Wilderness, which is also super, super cool. And so basically they just take an Outback, put a lift kit on it, all of the plastic fenders, and then it looks really awesome with like nice little touches. I'm into it. These will be on every corner in my town in Colorado within a week. Anyway, here's the Solterra. By the way, I thought in photos didn't look amazing. You guys know I don't value design. I really don't care. I wanna know how the car drives. But holy smokes, this thing looks great. And this entire set, it was like snowing here. It was insane. You can still see some remnants of that here on the wilderness, crazy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, like the floor moves around and maybe we'll insert a little clip now of the Solterra coming out for the launch. Hopefully that made it in. If it didn't, didn't make it in. Let's continue. Solterra over here. We got some racks on the top. Charge port. Let's take a look around it. We got our friends Ryan and Ben from the Kilowatts filming over here too. Hey guys. Oops, sorry for getting in your shot there. Oh, you're good, you're good. You can take a look at the interior. Jordan's got really nice material usage. That gauge cluster is really far back in there, isn't it? Super neat. Love the color. You can get all wheel drive on this car. It's basically Toyota BZ4X underneath, but with Subaru badges. So it's a partnership on a engineering side, but I'm not totally exactly sure kind of everything about it. So eventually we'll review it, I hope. And uh, really looking forward to sharing all the stuff. Um, yeah, my friend Dominic was checking, checking out the Toyota version the other day. He said it was pretty interesting. So looking forward to it. Coming down this way into the tunnel, we have the new Forester Wilderness. Same concept as the Outback I showed you, lift kit, plastic, cool design touches, everyone's gonna buy it. And then we just have a normal Forester, so let's just continue around this way, going for a walk. Wow, the auto show is empty today, it's great. We just get to share everything. I imagine for the next weeks it's gonna be insane. 
What do you think? We end with Ford over there. They have some really crazy, crazy stuff like F-150 Lightning and modified Mach-E's and F-100s. Let's go through Kia really quick. I believe this is the new Sorento hybrid that was just released yesterday. Pretty cool. There's the new EV9. That's what I'm interested in. And I believe they did say it is going to be slated for production. You can see here, Neo, uh, Nero Hybrid, Nero Electric. Whoa, whoa, we got to look at this. There's a Soul GT line now. Damn, that's like my dream car. If I could get a Soul EV GT line, count me in. Everyone loves to hate on these, but I think they're just so cool. They're the best. They're so neat. Oh, no way. It has literal halogen headlights up there, not even LEDs. Whoa, that does not look so good. They should just turn the parking lights off on that one. And they have the best minivans over here. These things, by the way, if you're not a minivan person, I get it. But if you are not into the carnival, then you are not into cars. Just take a look at the back of this thing. It is so cool how, like, you have executive second row seats that can fold all the way back. I believe we'll be reviewing one of these soon. I really can't wait. And I just love, I think Kia's killing it right now, honestly. They're really doing a great job. Oh, good. Another EV6 over here in that sort of matte silver color. We played around with this car in uh, the Munich Auto Show at IAA, the IAA. And then we get over to the Rebel Rally, uh, I think Sorento. I don't know if it's a hybrid or not, probably not. But man, does that thing look good. I really love support of Rebel Rally, mostly because it's a women-only event that involves no navigation assistance for off-roading. It's just so cool. Anyone who competes is a total badass. It's a great thing. And I'd love to find maybe some of the ladies that work for Out of Spec to go send them on a Rebel Rally one day. I think that'd be really neat. Oh yeah, how can we forget? Let's not skip the EV9. Holy crap. This thing's like a Telluride, but electric, and it looks sick. Love the wheels. It's like an interpretation of the ID3 wheels that we had in Europe, but like, damn, it's got like a giant ass triangle in there. You see that, Jordan? Isn't that crazy? You're Mr. Design Guy. What do you think about the car? Uh, very boxy. I really like it. Thank you. I can tell too. Yeah. Maybe you're not so <laughs> different on design evaluation than I am. <laughs> Look at the interior headrests. Well, I, you know, concept cars have never really been my thing, right? I really like to see the production ready versions, but overall, if it's gonna look anything remotely similar to that, count me in, that is sick, so sick. We have some Hellcat stuff over here on the left, 800 plus horsepower out of the box with a warranty, screaming V8, how can you not love it? I mean, FCA really just went crazy. There's a who, uh, the new Grand Cherokee 4xE. The way to spot the 4xEs, of course, is this blue accents on all of the vehicles. Wow, they just blasted the music when we rolled up. Anyway, that's how you can tell it's a 4xE. These things are just so, so great. Here's the charge port J1772. I'm sure it's the exact same drivetrain as uh, Wrangler 4xE, which, yeah, we've reviewed a couple times actually. And then inside, actually pretty luxurious. These things are nice and they have amazing Macintosh sound systems if you spec them properly. So that's kind of cool. It says service hybrid electric system. It says service, wait, where? When you open the door, it says service hybrid electric system. Seriously? Yeah. That's so funny. So maybe reliability on a pre-production one isn't so great. Um, should we just take a quick walk through here? I love the, the dichotomy of FCA. FCA is like, let's put a Hellcat in everything. Pacifica Hellcat, that's what I'm pushing for. And then you get the massive $100,000 Grand Wagoneer, which is like huge, but super luxurious and, <laughs> oh, locked, can't even show you inside. But yeah, peek in through the windows there. Super nice truck, really cool, of course. Then you get to Ram drive a Ram TRX in orange, talk about making a statement, 702 horsepower, all wheel drive launch mode. It has a specific feature on it that if all four wheels come off in the air too, it'll actually stiffen the damper so that you don't hit the bump stops on landings. TRX is just insane. And look at how beefy this thing looks in person. We've actually done some reviews on this truck and look, it's the opposite of what, you know, I love my electric smart car, and this is literal opposite. And I love, I just love cars. It's all good. Stelvio Quadrifolio and a very nice green. Jordan, your impression of that green? Love this green. Love the green. Blue green. It would be great in Colorado to have. 
uh, twin turbo V6, I think 2.9 liters, small displacement, uh, pretty spicy thing, In insanely rough suspension. Here's the Julia version that you're looking at here, quadrifolio, and then you get the uh, two liter turbo on this one. These things rip, and there was an early production run for Europe only that actually had a manual. In the US, we had got torque converter automatic only. And the funny thing is to turn traction control off in quadrifolios, you have to go into like full race mode. So you can't have soft suspension and slide, which is how I like to drive the car. And so for me, I wasn't able to get the adjustability I wanted out of the setup, but man, is that car maybe not the most reliable, but certainly, uh, yeah, certainly extremely crazy to drive really fast. Take a look at this. We have a Mach-E GT on the left. It's not the performance edition. You can tell by the wheels. So if you have those wheels, you get the non-mag ride suspension. If you get the spicy wheels, same size, then you get the mag ride. Here's the F100, holy smokes, look at this thing. You guys let me know if I talk too much in the comments. Actually, I won't be able to adjust in real time. <laughs> too bad, you get what you get. This thing is one of my favorites. It's basically an F100 with a Mach-E drivetrain in it, and even Mach-E infotainment and screens. We got to play around with this at the Holly EV event this past weekend. Jordan, just take a quick glance inside, so neat. Yeah, this is like one of the best. It has 5,100 miles on it, dang, that's pretty cool. Great truck, really nicely done. One of the SEMA builds, of course. I hope we see more EV conversions from automakers like this. Of course, you have just one of my all-time favorite cars, the Ford GT. Look at the uh, trussles in the back. You have the insane air management in terms of design. This is when design and engineering come together. It's just so crazy. Love that car. Here we have F-150 Lightning. You guys know we just posted a video yesterday of riding it. It was really awesome. And wow, it looks good in person. Look at the mega power frunk. You can get, I think, seven or nine kilowatt power output with Pro Power on board. Look at all the power outlets that are in here. Pretty much everything. You can go full tailgate mode. You have under front storage, which is really great. With a drain. With a drain. It's so perfect. And, you know, dual motor, it's really fast. Do pickup trucks need to be fast? No, but if you're making a truck, why would you make it slow? I don't know. Fast and efficient. That's what I'm all about. So I like it. Maki -E going for a hard launch right there. Full brakes. <laughs> nice Raptor. Mach E, let's see the spec on this particular one. This one is a all-wheel drive extended range. Here's Mach -E GT Performance Edition. So, yeah, this is the one I would get in this spec. I think it's called Cyber Orange. And then you get big brakes, mag ride. Car, re it really solves a lot of the problems of the handling of this car for performance driving. This car is fine for, for daily, of course. And then, damn, look at this SEMA build mach -E. This thing just looks insane, doesn't it? So cool. So they took a California Route 1, which is like the most efficient version, rear wheel drive, big battery, of course. They put insane seats inside. <laughs> That's so cool. They put on a wrap that looks like solar cells on the roof. It's just a wrap, I think, actually, maybe not. Uh, yeah, I don't know, hard to say. I think it is. And then of course you have some attachments here on a little bit of a bike rack that's hooked up to, take a look at this trailer hitch. It's literally an inch off the ground, look at that. <laughs> that's pretty neat. That is pretty neat. Oh, look at this Mustang here. Great color on this car, by the way. It looks nice. Love the surfboards on the top. Love the Ford plates. I guess this is an RTR specific upgrade package. That looks pretty good. All this looks pretty good. GT500 right here. We reviewed that car. Insane car. Really great. Everyone says GT500 is like this track killing monster. I don't know. I was so impressed with the balance of the car, actually. I was like, dang, that thing is great. Dances on the limit. Wasn't scary at all. Wasn't stupid fast. Was like exactly what I would want out of a car, except I'd want three pedals. Maverick, we've reviewed the Maverick many times on our channel already. Brandon attended the first drive launch for us. And this one's like a maxed out Lariat. But the thing that I like about the Maverick is if you spec one base, it's 19.9, I want to say, hybrid, 40 MPG city, steel wheels and you still get all the infotainment stuff everything you would need and cruise control is not standard that's my favorite feature but who cares and if i owned a maverick and i lived in southern california how could you not do this this looks amazing yeah that's just the spec right there drop fender flares awesome aero wheel covers that thing just looks sick
There's some more Ford stuff too, like the Escape Titanium Hybrid. Woo! Another Maverick F-150 Power Boost. This one's the hybrid. This actually has done huge numbers for us in our coverage. And you can get, let's see if this one has it really quick. Yep, it's got the Pro Power System. So take a look at this. Not only do you get the 110 outlets, you get a 240 volt hookup and you can actually charge a car from it. Now, depending on spec, you can actually close the tailgate. Let me see if this one has it. Yeah, it does. Auto close tailgate. Now we're talking, that's luxurious living. Oh, and you wanna see something funny with F-150s, by the way? If you want a really fast F-150, deploy the spoiler. Look at that. Just go like this. Downforce, baby. Now, put her back. Love that. I kind of want to drive F-150s around like that. E-Transit, take a look at this. We just shot a whole expose on this car for inside EVs. You know it's an E-Transit because it says E-Transit. <laughs> also, of course, DC fast charging, 115 kilowatt peak, rear motor, 198 horsepower. Uh, is that true? 198 kilowatts. So what's that, 290 horsepower, roughly. Come on over. You can get this in three different heights and three different lengths, depending on your spec. No lights in there today, but this one does have the power door option. Let's just, yeah, we'll just wait here for it. Let's just. <laughs> and the power door is going. Woo, good job. It's about how slow it'll charge, I imagine, at 115 kilowatts. 67 kilowatt hour battery pack usable, something like that. Honestly, it doesn't need to charge the fastest, doesn't need to have the most range, 108 to 115 mile range, I believe. EPA projected uh, based off of load capacity and things like that. Uh, pretty neat. Of course, we've reviewed the Ranger on this channel. We've reviewed the Bronco on this channel. This one's specced. Awesome. There's actually a Bronco display outside. We may or may not cover it, but they have goats there, right, Jordan? So cool. And goat mode, <laughs> go over any terrain. Weird thing about goat is it's G-O-A-T-T -T because I think Ford says go over any type of terrain, but then, yeah, that's not how acronyms work, but it was something like that. I guess we have more Subaru stuff over here. Take a look at this. So we got Rams going around all day, just sitting at, you know, 1,000 RPM. These trucks for like a week and a half will be under big load and never go above like two miles an hour. So pretty amazing design use case, I gotta say, for low speed. If you live in an area with traffic, these things are gonna be proven. Look, now we get the spicy Subaru stand. We have, yep, new BRZ which is essentially the same thing as a GR86 Toyota. Again, partnering that Toyota Subaru partnership. Rally car looks great, but this is of course just very exciting to see. Yeah, looking forward to spending some time with it. And uh, yeah, this just, it's neat. These, the thing with BRZ is it's always meant to be a little bit underpowered, more of a balanced car. You really gotta drive the crap out of it to get it to perform. And yeah, new WRX looks great, doesn't it? Man, these, and look at this here too. New design style on the Impreza, looks pretty sick. And yeah, manual transmission, all wheel drive, turbocharged, kind of the perfect combination for Colorado. So gotta love that. Overall, I think that's uh, stage one. Should we go explore some more, Jordan? Cool, see you along the way. Well guys, we are at the Porsche booth now. The thing with Porsche and LA Auto Show is they just go to the max. And it's no secret, I'm a pretty big Porsche guy. Um, so, you know, we've, we've put up on this channel already GTS Sport Turismo at launch, but let me walk you through some of the cars here, some of the things. First off, we start right up front on a great note, GT3 Touring, just, uh, yeah, no, actually not Touring, it's got the wing, I apologize. Uh, just regular GT3, no ceramic, steel brakes with the red calipers, that's odd, but really cool. And not a manual PDK car. So you can get, touring only with manual i believe and then you can get if you get a wing car with a pdk or uh, the better six speed manual than the seven speed that's in the regular 911 
Uh, yeah, 993RS, just insane car. This one was flown over from Germany from the Heritage Collection. Just one of my all-time dream cars. I'm not even going to look at it. Let's not talk about it because that is just going to ruin my life one day when I have to buy one. I will just have to sell everything. Anyway, we have the new Mission R, which is a fully electric sort of racing car. Now, this particular one doesn't actually work. They do have one at the Experience Center that does move, and I believe... There will be some videos of that coming out on the Porsche channel soon, but just look at the insanity of this car. It is stunning to look at, of course. It's got a wang, it's all good. But, you know, I love electric cars, but I also love combustion vehicles as well. And we have GT4 RS Club Sport. This is like, we haven't even started at the GT4 RS, which is probably where we should have started, but essentially this is like a super lightweight racing car. Look at this, this door, weighs nothing everything's fully vinyl look at the interior in here this is an off the shelf out of the box full-on race car that you can buy from a porsche dealership you can just go in and order one of these and then gt4 it's got the same motor as the gt3 of course so uh crazy high um revving flat six of course you know it's this is it's just a gt3 motor it's insane really cool you know this is could never drive it on the street though but then you get this, which is <laughs> the other end of Porsche, which is totally insane. A carbon fiber roofed Cayenne Turbo GT, which just set the Nürburgring record for SUVs, which is amazing. And just like, which is pretty wild, inside of Volkswagen Group, let me just give you a little bit of like history of how weird this is. Like Porsche pretty much was in charge for the drivetrain on this car. Then the Urus came out and beat it around the ring. And then the Porsche engineer said, nine, we must win. So then they made this car and it's just probably, I mean, by far, at least according to numbers, the best handling SUV ever made. Twin turbo, four liter V8, is it four liter? I think it is. Uh, insane car, really cool. Torque converter auto, by the way, in Cayennes, which is pretty amazing. Then we get the Panamera E-Hybrid. E this is the new platinum edition car, which is essentially a package that gives you all the stuff that you need for luxury. And uh, anytime you see green brake calipers or green accents on a Panamera Cayenne, then it's a uh, plug-in hybrid. So I don't know if the ports are gonna be open right now. I think it is, there you go, J1772 port on this car. And guess what? We'll be playing around with a Panamera Turbo SE hybrid very soon, thanks to our friend Shelby at Porsche. Then we get a Cayenne e-hybrid on the good wheels sitting low this thing just looks the business doesn't it new cayenne is one of the best suvs out there i really really like this car uh, just in terms of styling sizing and driving dynamics just overall fantastic vehicle and their plug-in systems are really interesting because you know so one of the things we talk about a lot when we review plug-in hybrids is this transition from electric to combustion and back and in the Porsche hybrids, there's like a little haptic feeling in the pedal that changes dynamically based on driving mode, battery state of charge, thermals, that you can then feel the wall when you're gonna turn on the combustion engine. So if you'd like driving a plug-in hybrid in electric mode most of the time, this actually helps you do that. And then here's really the star of the show for me. It's the GT4 RS, which is just an insane car. So basically you take your 718 body, you put on magnesium wheels, crazy suspension, carbon bodywork everywhere, GT3 motor, air intakes in the back that basically your induction noise is right next to your ears. So I, you're probably gonna need hearing protection to drive the thing. It's just an insanely cool car in terms of color and trim, it's bespoke. PDK only here, but that's totally fine. Just look at this work here in the back with the, with the carbon in the rear, totally insane. Yeah, I mean, this is just, and a great car. So let's imagine you bought one of these, then you need a complimentary vehicle. So a two car solution, if you will. And then we get to the uh, Taycan Sport Turismo, which essentially is cross Turismo, but you put on sedan suspension, you take the plastic around the side. This particular one is also the launch of GTS. So you have 390 millimeter uh, front brake discs up from 360. You have a better tuned or standard Porsche torque vectoring, standard Sport Chrono, you have uh, PDCC, if you option it, optimized for GTS calibration. Uh, what else do you have? I don't know, all really good stuff. Specific wheels to this car that are only available on GTS. Sport Turismo also adds some different plastic uh, side sills down here, blacks out the badges, the headlights are blacked out. You can still option roof rails, which I would totally do. Also, this is painted back here, which the Cross Turismo is not. Best Porsche option, by the way, this gloss back rear windshield wiper is only available on 
<laughs> GTS <laughs> as it falls off. We'll, we'll fix that in two seconds. Let's continue with the tour, shall we? We're gonna put that there and we'll come right back to it. Um, other than this, by the way, I just wanna mention a couple more things about this car. Uh, range is not announced by EPA, but everything we know and love from Taycan is. So this particular one's a US spec car. We know that because it has CCS type one. It's opening, there we go. And 270 kilowatt DC fast charging. You can see the amber signals here indicating US spec. Uh, nice thing about Taycan is charges from zero to 50% in 10 minutes and 47 seconds, according to our uh, testing. So you roll up to an EA station, charge it, plug it in and go. That's how we were able to set the cannonball record in the car. Here we go to 718. This is basically the full GTS line. So 718 GTS, awesome car. This particular one, PDK. Carmine read all of these cars in with the black accents, typical GTS colors, totally insane. Then we get to 992, 911. This one's a Targa 4 GTS. So all wheel drive GTS with a Targa. I don't know how many variations there are of 911, but just like an infinite amount. This one's seven speed car, which is cool. So manual transmission, saving the manuals. We get to Macan, which is really in its last year. Macan 3 is about to launch here pretty soon. So we'll see that next year. And they kind of stuffed this car over in the corner because nothing new or crazy going with it. But I have to say, this is a great car. By the way, in the new generation Macan, the GTS will be the top trim. So turbo gone from the vehicle. The GTS basically takes the turbo engine. It's all good. Then we get Panamera GTS. This one has the really unique clear taillight option on Carmine Red, looks good. Again, all of these GTS cars, Carmine Red with black. Awesome car, great executive sedan. My impression though, if you're gonna go for Panamera, just go for Taycan, I think. That's my impression. Then we get Taycan sedan over here, this particular one on the 20 inch Turbo S aero wheels. This is a rear wheel drive car and in white typical launch spec for Taycan, nothing too crazy, but it does have a really cool interior that is this sort of veganish, this cloth interior more or less, if you will. I think there is some leather in there. I don't know exactly. And then we have Taycan Cross Turismo. Uh, this one is the, of course, Turbo S. This is the exact car that Motor One used that won their entire comparison test. Uh, specced in Mamba Green. It's uh, actually, maybe they had a 4S. I could be wrong. Hmm, maybe this isn't the exact car. Anyway, ceramics, Mamba Green, 21 inch Taycan design wheels, uh, roof rails. And then you'll see here how I noticed, mentioned earlier that GTS has this uh, painted in Cross Turismo. This is always black. So that's a good way to spot the differences there. If you haven't already you know, found out the differences the other way. And we have some electric Porsche bikes that are so cool. These are basically commissioned, I believe, by Porsche Design. And this one's painted in chalk. Another fun Porsche tidbit for you if you want to know it. Chalk is only said in the US. In other markets, it's called crayon. So just depending on spec. I think crayon was probably trademark here in the US, so we call it chalk, but when the Germans come, they're always like, oh yes, I got a crayon, so funny. Well, we finished the tour of the first block. Let's head out the doors here where we are greeted by Edison Futures new unveils over here. They have a van and a pickup truck, allegedly. I'll be totally honest, I don't know too much about the company, but when I went to go ask them some specifications and things about the trucks, like what's going on, they said, I was like, okay, basic questions, right? I always start basic and dive in, see where their, their knowledge level is. And I was like, okay, what size battery pack do you have? It's like, oh, we're not releasing that. So it's like, here's a cool design study that they don't know how it's gonna be built in terms of specs. They say we're gonna be targeting range 300 miles. Sounds good. I was like, is that EPA or WLTP? Oh, we don't know. That's just the range we want to target. And look, they're nice guys, nothing against them, but we got to stop this trend of coming to the show, no technical info, no plan to build the, the things. And it just makes me a little bit angry if I'm honest. Like, let's just have real things. Fine. I, look, I understand everything has to start as a concept, right? And so it's tough because you want to have funding for your company. You want to get people in them. But like, if I was building a truck, I'd start at the technicals and then work backwards to design. And Jordan, maybe you would work the other way and we'd meet in the middle somewhere. So. Yeah, I think that's just maybe not the best plan, at least to my impression. EVgo fast charging, you guys know we use them all the time. It's awesome, uh, really reliable charging. They have a, a trend towards now installing 350 kilowatt chargers across the country. They've adapted a lot of the stations to uh, Tesla plugs now. Basically, they just use an internal Tesla Chatamo adapter, knock it on the side. You can unplug or plug in their Chatamo into the Tesla adapter. 
right into a Tesla. For example, this particular station is CCS and Chatamo, so you can see the Chatamo is plugged into the Leaf. This is just your standard CCS cable. Nothing too fancy, it works. Charging shouldn't be fancy, it should just work. It has pretty good reliability. Here's the Leaf. This one's the 62 kilowatt hour SL Plus. We just reviewed this car actually. You can see Chatamo charging here. The only downside with the Leaf is thermal management, air-cooled battery pack, but Aria is coming with CCS and liquid thermal management, which is gonna be awesome to see. Hey guys, <laughs> good to see you again. And so yeah, really excited for the next generation of Nissan EVs. Overall, we have, yeah, that's kind of it for this little section, car and driver, road and track on this little board here. I don't know why. Official merchandise, you can get your LA automobility shirt. Giant Electrify America sign. Imagine if they just put that over the chargers to cover things up, that'd be nice. But they have a solution for this, we'll talk about it in a little bit. But then we get to Belidi Electric. I don't know anything about it genuinely, but I wanna know everything because, <laughs> or maybe it's one of those cars that you should just drive and then not ask any questions perhaps because it's a little bit weird, but it's sort of like a tuk-tuk three-wheel design, but fully electric and has these deployable solar panels that pop out. We're gonna try and see if we can maybe arrange a drive at some point, but look at this. So you can see here, you have the panels on the roof sides and then you can fold it out like a butterfly more or less, and then you can charge. And actually it's a pretty small battery pack, but they were saying you can charge it in just a couple hours or maybe like a half a day or something like this on solar. On the left here, we have the the Cobra, I think is what they call it. It's just basically electric kit car, Cobra chassis, pretty neat. And then you get the Electromechanica uh, Solo cars or Sono, which is it? Solo. Solo. And yeah, it's a single seat electric device. I think we're gonna take one for a ride later on, but they didn't honestly know much about the techy nerdy, nerdy stuff in there. So I was like, okay, I don't know. Again, just like we're at an auto show. We're all automotive journalists here, like let's get, a trend towards having really knowledgeable spokespeople so that we can provide you guys with all the info I wanna share. So let's continue. Here's Electromechanica again. They've been converting uh, Porsche old speedsters. They call it the e-roadster. Cool cars, really neat. They've been doing this for years and yeah, long, long time player in that industry. Continuing over, we're going towards the South Hall, but then there's just a lone EV6 in here. <laughs> what? Why? What is this doing over here? Jordan, do you think we should go through the Galpin Hall? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. See, some see some customs. So here's the uh, EV6 right here, and um, yeah, looks good, no, no difference. No serrated on the wheel arches on this one. I wonder if that was just a launch thing, I don't know. Great looking car in person, it's grown on me. I always like the Ionic 5. See, this car's built on eGMP, which is an 800 volt Hyundai Kia architecture, and so this GV60 and Ionic 5 We'll share the same crazy charging performance. We've done a, a charging test on this vehicle, 240 kilowatts, 10 minutes from zero to 50%. We do run into th some thermal issues while charging and also lithium plating protection up at 79 to 83% state of charge, it, like drops to three kilowatts, then spikes back just because you are stressing the packs when charging so far, uh, so hard. But I'm really excited to see this car on the road. Um, in US spec, so we'll be driving that soon. Again, I really enjoyed driving the Euro spec car and what a machine, seriously. It's, for the price, I'm not sure if there's a more technically advanced electric car uh, that you can purchase at all. Yeah, I just worry about efficiency compared to even like Kona Electric's really efficient. Ionic 5 doesn't seem to be as good. So yeah, there's a lot to figure out here. Now we're going over to Galpin, which is a huge auto dealer association in Southern California. You can see classic Porsches down the line here. That's great. And then, <laughs> look at this, it's a lifted ID4, what? That's so cool. And oh no, they've parked the Taycan in high suspension. So I guess they have an EV wall over here. These are some of the EVs that they retail. And so what's funny is we were talking to some of our friends at Volvo and they were like, Galpin does such a good job with their displays. We didn't even put a whole stand in because Galpin just brought it. Take a look at this, ID4 lifted on great wheels, rear wheel drive, by the way, this one's not even all wheel drive. And damn, kind of want to go for a ride in that. That's pretty neat. Uh, Mazda MX-30, the worst EV of the year, objectively and subjectively for me. I-Pace, oh, I wish we could cover more I-Paces. They're so great. 
they were really right on the leading edge. There was a time where electric SUVs were just Model X, e-tron, and this car. That was it. Miss it. Chalk Taycan, probably Turbo S, I imagine, with ceramics. Let's take a look. But they parked it in high suspension. Why? I don't know. Turbo. Uh, wow. 4S on ceramics. Damn, that's an interesting spec. So they spec power charge port, Mission E design wheels. Um, yeah, ceramics, which was like an $8,000 option on a 4S. And then in chalk. See, in the US, this color is called chalk. In Germany and other markets, it's called crayon, but they couldn't retail it here. XC40 recharge in denim blue, but with aftermarket black painted wheels. That looks pretty good. Polestar 2 performance pack, of course. We have reviewed this car many times. Great, you get the Olin's dampers, the Brembo brakes. Same CMA architecture as XC40 recharge, but a little bit spiced up from a hardware component. This one's a Mach-E standard battery pack, all wheel drive. That's interesting. I've never actually seen one in person. And yeah, on those wheels, a little bit designed, looks pretty good, gotta say, I like it. And then you get this crazy cool Polestar 1. Unfortunately, Polestar 1's nearing the end of production these days. I think we'll be going on their final event to go drive them. One of my favorite cars, built on Volvo SPA chassis, supercharged, turbocharged, four-cylinder engine, plus a 35 kilowatt hour battery pack in the back, two electric motors, the most complicated chassis motor powertrain design ever, but it works and yeah, we were with our friends from Motor One. We did BMW M8 competition versus GT500 versus Polestar One, and this won the entire test. Oh, I'm running out of breath, but I can't. Let's go and take a look at these. Nice Aston's back over this way, GT in the Gulf livery, which is really nice. Then you get, of course, another GT500 in Grabber Lime, I think is that color is called, the Bora GT over here. But then take a look at these Defenders. You guys know I'm a huge Land Rover nerd. And man, I do love the new Defender. And I love the green on this, the flat old white wheels with the white roof. That is about the coolest new Defender I've ever seen. I mean, part of it, it feels a little bit imitation-y, maybe a little bit too much green everywhere but holy smokes, am I digging that. That's cool. That's cool. If you had an old classic one to match this spec, that would go really well. I like this blue surfer edition thing too. That's pretty neat. And you just have all the modified Broncos down the line. Well, cool. And check out that lifted navigator with max tracks on the roof and everything. That's pretty sick. Yeah, Galpin just goes all out, don't they? They do a great job. Let's run out. Yeah, these Astons are great. DBS, drop top, love that. Doesn't get better. I don't see why we have to like just electric cars or combustion cars. It's nice to like both. I just love cars. Wow, this is cool. Holy smokes. This is an Aston Martin Signet. It is one of my dream cars. I don't think it was ever retailed here in the US, so I don't know how this car got here. I can't believe, <laughs> what? This is so cool. It's basically a Scion IQ rebadged as an Aston so they can meet cafe standards for fuel economy. Really awesome car. Powertrain's pretty much totally unchanged, but like the, this, is, this wins Auto Show Award by far. It's the best one here, so gotta love it. It's really awesome. And just having a purple signet, ah, oh, super, super, super into it. That is so cool. Well, let's continue onwards. Guys, we're heading into the next section now just for a quick tour so I can see some weird ass electric cars down there. This is right up my alley. Let's head down. <laughs> Holy smokes, look at this. There is a company called Imperium, which I've only heard of. If you take a look over there to the left, they have these weird like electric cars. I don't know where they're based. All right, so let's go look at some Imperium stuff. Whoa, this is weird. So they have golf cart, donked golf cart. Look at that thing, that looks hot. We got the security patrol, the Paul Blart machine right here. <laughs> it's called the John Way Irby 4. That is a great name. Four kilowatt DC motor, interesting. You can go up to 35 miles an hour, up to 75 miles on a charge, 72 volt, <laughs> very low <laughs> AGM packs. You can option a lithium. And then the security package is available for $895. I assume that gets you the lights and everything like that. How neat is this? Wow. 
man, just talk about a way to not get taken seriously when you try and pull someone over, but hilarious. This thing is so cool. Surfboard on the roof, hell yeah. Perfect for like little rental fleets and stuff like that. They're only eight grand. That's wild. Love it. Say that one more time. Christmas presents. Well, yeah, you will just put it in carry on with us on the plane. <laughs> yeah, Colorado. Colorado. Yeah. And then we get the, I guess, box version. Perfect for little resorts and stuff like this. This is like a knockoff Ford Ranger esque, but badged as an Imperium. Oh, that is not a good door sound feeling. But it's kind of like the candy EVs reviewed. Really junky, but like when you start factoring in price, like maybe good. I don't know. I just let's try the door thunk test. Ready? That's really not bad. Not bad yeah. But the pop, the open. That's where it's not the best. But yeah, well, I mean, what more could you actually need? It actually looks good. It's got like a very Tundra esque front end but then on like a really small truck, doesn't it? Yeah. Like if you just took a snapshot of this, you'd say, oh, someone modified their Tundra. <laughs> this is the SEV, pretty interesting. You've got quilted floor mats, baby. We got wood grain. This is a Skywell. So interesting, I've never been able to see these in person. Look at the seat controls on the backrest there. What could that possibly be for? So the rear passengers can adjust the passenger seat. Is this meant to be like a chauffeured vehicle? I don't know. This looks so interesting. So I guess Imperium would be the importer. Yeah, you can see Sandy put his sticker here, Monroe Live. That's cool. I'm sure it's on his channel. I kind of want to check it out now. That's neat. I, I hate to say I don't know en enough about these vehicles other than they're pretty interesting. Charging port, J uh, Type 2, or is that Jeep? Yeah, that's Type 2. And then <laughs> CCS on the bottom. So they're not even adapted for US charging standards. These things don't go back in. Holy smokes. <laughs> That's so weird. Yeah, I don't know. Good luck, but like, wow. I mean, they're kind of cool. I think we should try and review one. If anyone from the company is watching this video, give us a call. We'll fly anywhere. We'll take one out. We'll take all of them out. I just want to drive the security patrol around for a little while. That is just Super cool. Then we get some more stuff over this way too. You get, oh, they have a trike version, kind of like a tuk-tuk again. That's cool. And then what's this little contraption here on the right? That is one of the most interesting looking things ever. Totally blacked out windows. Really neat actually, isn't it? That is so cool. Concept sled, yeah, something like that. Really interesting shape. This is like a new trend to have these three-wheeled vehicles in this year. Hmm. Then they also do e-bikes, 500 watt motors. Damn, this thing looks cool. It's called a Rover. Love that. What do you guys think? Out of spec scoots? Dropping a hint for next year's projects? I don't know anything about micro mobility. If you know a lot about micro mobility and want to make videos with us, let us know. And then here's the Indy One electric car. This is supposed to be like a computer gaming EV. Essentially, they're saying, this is a supercomputer for the road. You can game, and then, I'm not sure why you'd want to do that in a car, but I guess some people do. It's really like a Gen Z mobile. And then it's like big and like shaped quite nicely, but I have to be totally honest. We came to review this car yesterday, and another situation, like the cars earlier, they couldn't tell us anything about it. They had in their press release, right, 95 kilowatt battery instead of kilowatt hour. They didn't know the motor designs, they didn't really tell us anything about the car. So I was like, look, if you're not confident presenting the product to me to share with our audience, I don't think we're gonna be confident enough to share it with you guys. So maybe we'll give this a couple more years to bake a little bit longer in the oven, if you know what I mean. But my impression was, yeah, just really not amazing. Like a lot of aspirational specs, but then if you're gonna make an aspirational electric car, why not just go and say it does a million miles on a charge and it costs $3. I don't know. It just seemed like mundane, but they didn't know how they were gonna get there. My impression. Going up the elevator. Oh, you're taking the other side. It's a race to the top. Right now I'm in the lead. <laughs> it's a long way up. Hey, you guys are, this is a video. Oh, look at all the uh, ends over there. They got Kona N, they got uh, 
Elantra and Hatch, I guess is what it's called, maybe? Something like that. They, I would say I-20. Whoa, blasted in the face here with the Fisker Ocean. That is a great looking vehicle. And I guess they've released their, their uh, production specification version here recently. But damn, does this thing just not look the business. Yeah, don't know too much about it. Can't wait to review it. Fisker is a company that's been through a lot. Karma and Fisker are now two separate companies, if you didn't know. Karma is like a Chinese uh, car. They build the Rivero and the GS-6L that we reviewed. Really not a good car for the money anymore. I said that in the review and they never called me afterwards. Wonder why, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, sometimes it's hard doing our job, right? I try to be so just car focused and then sometimes people get upset because I share my opinions, but I'm like, this is, all I'm doing is sharing my opinions about the car. It's why we have multiple automotive journalists. Everyone thinks of things differently. So have multiple people drive your car. I don't know. This IS probably 500 F Sport V8, sick, rotiform wheels, looks great. All about that. LC500 with like a speedster back end. That's so cool. You guys know LC500 is one of my all time favorite cars. Amazing V8, the best rev limiter in the business is pop, 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 pop. Sounds great. Actually a really good transmission. Like this is what happens when the Lexus engineers get to go a little bit wild, not as wild as like, uh, you know, some of the old supercars in the past, but yeah, so this is, this is a real spicy machine. And then we have the new LX600. This is still one of the last like, you know, body on frame design, big SUVs. Check out that grill. You think it's big enough? I don't think so. <laughs> you got a new, look, the new GX460 is still pretty much identical to, Ty to Timon's uh, 2004 GX. Great trucks, they'll just run forever. Here's another LX600 in the back. This one's an F Sport trim. I'd go full off-roady spec on one of these. Absolutely love it. Trying to think about the best way to cover. Let's head over to Electrify America, see what they have going on. Going by the Mark Levinson LS500 uh, over here. Another fantastic car, just totally uh, sort of underserved in the market and outshined by S-Class and 7 Series and other things. Ooh, Ionic 5. Let's go take a look at this. So we have, of course, Hyundai and Kia just in general, I think are really killing it in the market right now from design to build quality to driving dynamics to everything. It's really amazing. And so this is a car you guys have been asking for us to film for a long, long time. Look at those taillights. That is so cool. We'll do a full tour on this. They're filming with it. I don't want to kind of get in the way of anyone. You can see here the wheel design's neat. We've seen this car in Europe, so nothing super new. We'll let everyone kind of work with it as they need to. We don't need to get in their way. So really, really neat. This is their new electric SUV concept. Very much a concept. Whoa, it's got like an i3 uh, glass trunk over here type situation going on. Same sort of pixel rear lights. I love the lights. Look at that, you can sit sideways and again, cool idea, but <laughs> won't be able to drive it. This is the Kona Electric, the exact same specification that we actually have at our house right now. <laughs> That's sitting there for review. And uh, yeah, cool car. Really like it. I, just, I, you know, I just shared my, my impressions of the new Kona Electric with you guys and have to say it was uh, amazing. Really good car. You know, the only real downside is just front wheel driveness of it. By the way, new Santa Fe plug-in over there. Take a look at that. That's pretty cool. Elantra, one of the best entry level cars here, here in hybrid form. I don't think I've driven the hybrid, but oof, this thing is really, really neat, really cool. And then we get the Nexo, which is one of the, again, the all time weird favorite cars that I absolutely love because it's a bespoke chassis just for the hydrogen powertrain. And yeah, I really, really want to review one of these. Uh, yeah, you have to probably depressurize something to open the cap. Overall, great car, actually really premium on the inside. Take a look at this, look at the seats, really cool. And like, I just love that they went out of their way to build a bespoke chassis for a hydrogen vehicle. Now in the US, this car isn't that popular. I believe it's only sold in California. However, in markets like South Korea and others, they're actually even a little bit more popular than that. And if you thought the LX600 grill was big, holy smokes, take a look at this thing. Cab over in the US, hell yeah. Fuel cell, it's called the Exient. I don't know, or 
yeah, I don't know how to pronounce it. That has got to be the biggest ADAS radar sensor I've ever seen right there on the front. Beefy. <laughs> Man, I'd love to drive this. Hyundai's working on great stuff, great designs all together. Pretty good. I see a Model 3. I see a Tesla Model S Plaid over here. Why? I don't know. Oh, look, this is my favorite car here, Jordan. Love the design of this. Two motors, great body lines, <laughs> unlimited amount of space. Right here, this is about how good I could design my car. But then they got their Mullen 5 over there. Can I be totally honest with our viewers and tell them I've never heard of them before? Have you heard of them before? Nope. Okay, well, it's not just me. Um, yeah, we're kind of skipping around. Let's just rock and roll over this way really quick because I see a canoe, see a Tesla Model 3, baby. How about that? That's pretty exciting. Actually, this one's pretty funny. They got the wheels all curbed up on it too. Look at the back right wheel, just destroyed. Brand new one though. Blacked out trim, new uh, updated sport wheel designs. Canoe right here. This thing is cool. License plate, Go EV from Oklahoma. Canoe is really interesting. It's more of a design study, but I think they're like, as far as they go, I personally understand that the design is polarizing. I love the way it looks. I love the concept. It's an electric people mover that will increase in time with uh, sort of uh, ADAS features, so you don't have to, to drive as much. They'll also have a leasing structure, so they'll go out, they'll come back, they'll go out, they'll come back, they'll get updated and refreshed every time. So multiple use case for the chassis. They'll have a full closed loop sort of structure where they can put materials in the car, send it out, and then recycle at the end of their cycle. I think it makes sense, it's pretty cool. Now we get to a pretty big story over here, Electrify America, front and center in automobility this year, which is pretty cool. And uh, so you can see all of their Electrify America home chargers lining the walls around the back plate. I've been asking them to get Tom a unit so that he can do an Electrify America home charger review. But if you look straight ahead at the Signet units, those things are under, well, it's a mock canopy, but a canopy. And over the next one year, there will be uh, five, four to 500 of these individually installed at more than 100 stations by the end of 22 and they will actually generate power. Now the power that they generate won't be enough to actually uh, charge a car, of course. It's gonna be a couple kilowatts of panel, I imagine. But overall, uh, you'll be able to power your lights and other things like that. So in terms of, I guess the way this would work is you pull your car up here. I guess you you're get real close or you back in or something, you open the door, you're under the canopy, you grab the CCS connection, you plug in the car. I'm imagining like a Taycan or Mach-E over here, or if you have Kona, you plug in up front. And if it's pouring rain, well, you're covered and it looks really cool. Nice thing about these is they really don't require any crazy work at the sites. You just drop them in and I guess plug in some lights to them. Great idea. You can see here a little test drive loop. These are all just display chargers. I don't think they're actually plugged into anything other than 110 outlets. And uh, yeah, that's pretty interesting. I see Ionic 5 over there. I see two Tycons, both different shades of red, Carmine red and I don't know what the other one is. Another Ionic 5 straight on behind the fuel cell truck. Hyundai Home. Solar panels, battery pack storage. Does Tesla just do something and everyone copies them? <laughs> Good idea though, this is really cool. This would make like the, for the perfect size tiny home, honestly. Let's, can we check it out, is this cool? So you have a home EV charger, solar panels, and energy storage system all provided by Hyundai, I guess. Wow, is it locked? Yes, that's like a nice tiny home. And then I guess you put your bedroom over that way. Well, I would love to live in that. Maybe that's what we put on the out of spec ranch before we can build our house. One of a Hyundai homes, we'll just steal it from their display here. And then we get the Hyundai Santa Cruz, which is I think one of the coolest cars of the year, genuinely. I love small trucks, I love this idea. It's really just a car chassis with a little bit of a lift kit and Totally a great size, love the color combinations. Let's just take a look in this one really quick. Again, I can't say enough good things. My impression of Hyundai Kia is just through the roof right now. They really keep delivering on everything. They're delivering cars for markets that are needed. They're creating new markets such as this. I mean, this and Maverick, these types of small inexpensive trucks didn't exist 
a year ago, really. Yep, those Tycons over there look pretty good. What do we have here? The Chevrolet booth. So are we gonna have anything electric? Will they have a bolt here? I don't know, actually, this is interesting. Let's see if we can find a bolt or anything plug related at Chevrolet. Because I guess GMC is a separate brand, so we wouldn't expect to see Hummer EV here, would be my impression. See a new Suburban with the uh, off-road stuff. That's pretty good. I love the new Suburban, by the way. I think it's a great truck. I would go for the high country, but this is a good example. You get the Z71 on this, and then you can get the uh, Premier on that one. Same, same chassis, different, different design targets. Great truck, really is. These things are just solid. We had a ton of Suburbans growing up, and now they are still plentiful and still have been moving Americans longer. Suburban's the longest running nameplate in automotive history, by the way. Just a little tidbit of information right there for you. Um, still not seeing literally anything electrified. I see a diesel Colorado, the Baby Max. It's a four cylinder diesel. What do we have here? Big Silverados. Big trucks back here. New C8s, Corvettes. We can't find electric. Let's find some spicy stuff, yeah? Z06. Z06. Hell yeah. I'm so excited for the Z06. Naturally aspirated, flat plane crank. It's going to rev to the moon. Big power for being non-forced induction. I don't know what it is off the top of my head, but seriously spicy. And it just looks good, all the extra air intakes all around a really great uh, holistic package. You, know, you guys know we've reviewed just the standard C8 with uh, Z51 performance pack and yeah, left me wanting more. Well, here's more. That's pretty cool, but literally not, not one even mildly electrified vehicle here. Isn't that pretty disappointing, Jordan? Look, I'm not Mr. EV all the time. I, I think there's a time and place for combustion vehicles, but I think um, overall, you know, GM needs to like put some EVs out here. They keep saying they got this big plan. Let's see it. Bring the Silverado EV concepts. Oh, well, that's a little disappointing. Now we get to one of my favorites, JLR. Here we go. <laughs> F-Pace SVR, five liter supercharged V8, 550 horsepower almost out of this thing with the tune, maybe more, maybe 575. This is one of the best SUVs on the market. New updated interior, by the way, looks really good. That shifter and everything. Wow, love it. I-Pace, hell yeah. One of the, my favorite electric cars. We spoke about I-Pace a little earlier. This one's specced wonderfully on the 22s with the carbon inserts. Those are the wheels to get. There's two different 22 inch wheel options on I-Pace that I really like. Um, just as a refresher, I haven't looked in I-Pace for such a long time. Take a look in there. Beautiful glass roof, of course, if you look upwards. Really just one of the best interiors. It's so cool. I wish, the problem is we don't really, we've never really reviewed an I-Pace because they don't keep them in the media fleets. I don't think there's one Jaguar review car in the country. If you own one, let us know. We'll love to do a little expose on it. And then, whoa, the new Range Rover. I told you earlier, I'm a huge Land Rover nerd. <laughs> I'm shaking, this is so cool. Lots of great powertrain options in the new Land Rover you can get. So they've ditched their, their five liter V8, which I love that engine, but it's gone now. So now you get the BMW 4.4 liter turbo, twin turbo V8 as the top engine choice. Then you can get the Ingenium inline six, which is the one down, which is the same engine that we've reviewed in Defender, for example, great. By the way, this is the SV version. So if you see SV or these sort of bronze accents or a ceramic badge on the back, you know that's just big dollars. So we'll get out of the way here for this filming. Um, I just wanted to talk one last thing about Range Rover before we walk away. So in Range Rover now, full size, you can get a plug-in hybrid system. I don't know when it'll come to the US, but it's actually great. So the last gen Range Rover had the two liter Ingenium engine, which is my impression, not a great engine paired with a plug-in system that, in my impression, was not a very good plug-in system. Now the new plug-in hybrid is like 35 kilowatt hours, 100 mile WLTP range. Land Rover says about 80 miles real world, 60 to 80 miles real world. And yeah, it actually does DC fast charging at, I wanna say between 40 and 50 kilowatts on that plug-in hybrid. So that might be a really cool car to play around with. I can't wait. 
I know not everyone loves plug-in hybrids because it's sometimes the worst of both worlds instead of the best of both worlds, but in my impression for a Range Rover, it's probably the right powertrain choice. But also on this chassis, sorry to keep going back to it, they will have a full battery electric version coming down the line in the future. And yeah, I can't wait for that. I'm an ex Land Rover, Range Rover owner. I just love them so much. Defender 110, of course, on the big wheels. Looks pretty cool. You can now get the V8 in this. It is the five liter uh, supercharged V8, 510 horsepower, I think, in this configuration. Cool thing about this is you can even get a drift mode and in the press materials, they have it lifting a wheel, sliding around on the short wheelbase. It's so cool, just the best. Toyota Mirai, built on Lexus LS500 chassis, essentially their hydrogen version. It's now the next generation. Um, never been up close with one. I really want to try out some hydrogen stuff. You guys know I think it's kind of maybe silly for road use. Look, they had to remove the shift knob because people were stealing them or someone already stole it. Um, but you guys know I think hydrogen's a little bit silly for daily driving, but, well, maybe not for daily driving. I don't know. Basically, I want to learn more about it before I keep knocking it. And then we get over here to VinFast. This is something you guys have been asking us to cover for a long time. VinFast is a Vietnamese electric vehicle company. They have the VF E35 and then the big one, I can't remember off the top of my head what it's called. Um, essentially, they're like the GE of Vietnam. They like own everything. Now they have this electric car company. The cars look amazing. This thing looks like a better Lincoln Navigator, I think. It's the E36, that makes sense, one better. And uh, man, does that thing just not look great? That is sick. Jordan, what do you think? It looks great. Yeah, the, uh, the roof line's kind of like short compared to the hips on the car, so it just gives that really sleek, aggressive, long look. Nice. Like a limousine. It's like a limousine. <laughs> I, I honestly don't know any of the tech specs, but like I said, if anyone wants to uh, let us review one, we'll do it. That'll be great. Here we go. What does this have? Overall dimensions, range. So this is all... So you can get 422 miles WLTP, which is gonna be like 360 EPA, 350 EPA, maybe even less. We'll see, I don't know, something like that. Here's some more stuff. Airbag system, ADAS, do we have powertrain? Max power, 300 kilowatts, five and a half seconds, zero to 62 miles an hour. Nice, E36, I like it. That'll hopefully do really well. Seems like a really great design. And then remember how I was saying earlier in this video how Volvo didn't put their own stand here because Galpin basically was doing it for them? Well, here we go. <laughs> so you have Honda and Volvo kind of in one. Feels like a car dealership floor, and that's because it is. <laughs> Volvo V60 T5 with the sport exhaust tailpipes. Great color on this particular one. T5 uh, XC40. This one's an R design. Pretty nice spec. S60 over here. This one's the B5 with the new mild hybrid system. And because it's an inscription with the mild hybrid, you actually get the Orpher's uh, crystal shifter, which is pretty cool. That's neat. S90, again, B6, long wheelbase. These ones, I think, are produced in China now. MX30 over there, new color on XC60. This looks really great. XC90 in the back. So they got all the, the almost all the stuff, but nothing super fancy. Mazda MX5 RF. Right, Jordan? You're a Miata man. Yep. You want to share anything about this car? Retractable fast bag. It's the new Indy 2, so slightly more horsepower than most Miatas have had in the past. 181 horsepower, so pretty good. Cool. Love it. Looks good. Mazda 3 hatch with some mods. That looks pretty nice. What do you think? Yeah, they really do, and they drive really well, too. I'm really a, a big fan. Here we have the new Frontier. We've reviewed this car. Big numbers, again, people love this thing, and I have to say I agree. Nissan's really taking an approach where they, in the last two years, are just revamping their entire model lineup from Armada to Pathfinder to the new Z to Aria, and even the new Rogue, they're all getting really good. I have to say my impression is the driving dynamics aren't totally amazing, um, but like when you buy a Nissan, that's maybe not your top priority, but like the touch and feel and design is good, and I think they made the right approach, spending the money where they could revamping their lineup. And I have to say, Nissan's back, baby, in my opinion. Now we have the two star cars up here on the stage. You have the Aria, fully electric. Great car because as you guys know, the Leaf has always been sort of, you know, it's been around forever. Nissan was very pioneering when the Leaf came out almost 10 years ago. And here with Aria, you get two different battery pack versions, front wheel drive or all wheel drive. I believe torque vectoring in the rear as well. CCS charging, liquid thermal management, all the good stuff that we hope to see. Great interior. The big question is, how is that going to compare to ID4, Mach-E, Model Y, etc.? 
I can't wait for next year's big SUV comparison test. Now we get over here to the new Z. Now I've been lucky enough to film that car in Colorado at PPIR. That video is on this channel. So cool, can't wait. Very similar chassis to the old 370Z. However, you can get manual transmission still, 400 horsepower, basically the same engine out of the Infiniti Q60 Red Sport, factory sport exhaust, carbon fiber drive shaft with manual and limited slip diff. That thing just looks the business. It's probably gonna drive great. And we have some revving clips so you can hear what it sounds like on our TikTok out of spec studios. Continuing on, looks like we have a production grade Aria over here in blue with really ugly power wheels. <laughs> what do you think of the wheels design guy? Um, yeah, not a fan. They okay. have weird bulges in them. Yeah, so what you need is we need Drew to make a set of really hardcore Martian wheels for this thing. I don't like the grill either. But By the way, new Sentra SR, we've reviewed this car. Of course, this is one of our best MPG tested vehicles in our loop ever. So efficient, drives really well. CVT tuning's actually good. It's the first CVT I didn't mind driving. And this is where I think Nissan made the turning point. Then things are just getting better and better and better. Two Toyota, big, big ones back to back here. This is a nice section of the show. By the way, it's so nice being here today when no one's here. We couldn't do this video literally any other time. <laughs> oh, Corolla hatch over here, by the way. If you get an XSE, you can get a manual, which is one of the coolest cars that no one knows about. So many few manual cars. Corolla with a Wang, what? Hell yeah. This is hot. This, I just, you know, in case you're unaware, when you put this accessory on your Corolla, you can leave work, leave to work about six minutes later in the morning because it's so fast. Oh, it's a Camry TRD, hell yes. The only thing cooler than this is the Avalon TRD, which they're discontinuing, but saw one on the road the other day, got excited. By the way, new Tundra, baby. This thing's big. You can get a hybrid now in the new Tundra. I'll show you that powertrain system over here. Yeah, look, the Tundra is a really popular car built, I believe, in Texas. So it's American built truck. The styling subjective doesn't do anything for me, except make me, make me want to walk away a little bit. But in terms of capabilities, in terms of overall build quality, you just can't deny how strong those trucks are, how well they do. And overall, honestly, I think it's going to be a huge seller here. Uh, this is so funny that this car is still made, honestly, the Sequoia TRD Pro. It's like hasn't changed in the last 40 years is what it feels like. And the interior feels that way too. Wait till you see the shift knob on this thing. Oh, they removed it. It's like the you can already kind of get an impression from that stick sticking up. Yeah, <laughs> this is, yeah, not, not a car that you want to be in if you're into interior design. Here's the hybrid cutaway of the uh, Tundra, by the way. So battery pack in the rear, I don't know any of the specifics. You can see pancake motor sandwich between the motor and the transmission, which is super neat. Uh, and this means you can also do a, a four wheel drive mode in electric since you can see the PTO over here, or I should say sort of the transfer case is post electric motor. Onboard charger looks like it's over here. Some of the inverter, some of the work, stuff like that. And that is the factory placement for the steering wheel. So you must just drive down the road sideways. I'm just joking, of course, that's not true. Ooh, here's a new Tundra build for SEMA. That looks pretty good. It's on some general grabbers. Max tracks on the rear. Big cab, short bed, the way it should be. Steps out the back, TRD Pro spec. Man, that thing looks pretty good, I have to say. Here's the platinum version. So this is like the maxed out one with all the stuff. Yeah, it is a huge truck. Man, I can't wait till we get one to test. Uh, four runners here, TRD Pro in this great limish green color. Really, really, really love that. I got to show you the camper in the back on the taco over there. It's called Taco Zilla. But before we do that, take a look at this Supra. What do they call it again, Jordan? I don't know. It's a one-off. I can't remember the name, but very reminiscent of Supras of past. The Sport, Sport top. top, built for SEMA, of course. Really cool, you know, automatic. I wish they would go all the way and just put a manual in this car. BMW B58 inline six cylinder, 380 horsepower for 2021 model year, 2022, I think, up from 330 or 340. Uh, great car, we've done track reviews on this. We've done road reviews, not on this one-off version, but honestly, one of the best cars I've driven all year. The only thing is like, if you're gonna buy a fun car, it needs to have three pedals. That's really its biggest downside, in my opinion. Wish it was more. This one has three pedals. Yes, this one does have three pedals. It is the GR86, right? Why am I, I'm just getting confused. I've been talking for so long. GR86, really cool car. Again, same thing as the BRZ that we saw at the Subaru booth, just kind of badged each way. Some little engineering differences, but not much. This is the Rhombus. 
Hell yes. <laughs> I just love everything about this. It looks like a Toyota interpretation of a Citroen from 20 years ago. Look at the steering wheel, so weird. Everything about this, you know, concept cars. Toyota's been doing these concept cars for a long time, but I just love this whole stand because they have like wheelchairs with electric front motors, like suitcases with six wheels. I don't know what any of this is, but it's so funny and so cool. And I love all the weird stuff. You guys know that. Super neat Tacoma lifeguard truck. But take a look at this, the Tacozilla. You guys know I love overlanding, love camping. Would love to shoot a whole video of this for our overlanding channel. Perhaps we should do that. Take a look at this in here though. They did a great job building this thing out. You got a bed, kitchen. I imagine a little shower on the left-hand side. Nice materials, good views. Very old school reminiscent of Toyota camping in the past. Love the color trim design op options out here. Love the exhaust pipe exit over here. This is one of the best design elements, I think, of the entire truck. Now in practical real world, I don't know if you could actually do it that way once things get hot, but overall, man, what a great looking vehicle just in general. Then we get the new BZ4X. This is similar to Solterra underneath, front wheel drive or all wheel drive, only a 10 kilowatt increase in all wheel drive, which is pretty weird in terms of power output. Uh, don't ask me any specs because I don't remember, but yeah, it looks pretty much the same. Maybe a little bit not as cool as the Solterra, but won't really make a difference one way or the other. I think, at least off my impression, my friend Dominic was just playing around with this car. And I think we've hit pretty much everything. We skipped the Lincoln booth. Perhaps they have a plug-in hybrid 400 horsepower aviator, but I don't really think there's anything super new over there. And then look at that Fisker Ocean there off in the distance, covered up. But I think that's pretty much the LA Auto Show. So, no one's around. I'll say goodbye. Thank you so much for tuning in, joining the Auto Show as if you were kind of walking around with me. I know it's a long video. Some of you may not care, that's fine. But at least that was my impressions of the Los Angeles Auto Show. A lot of automakers not here this year, BMW, Audi, Mercedes. Yeah, just, just a smaller show in general. And honestly, I think that's fine. Fun to come to, saw a lot of viewers, saw a lot of people in the industry. Great to see everyone if I saw you here. And man, ready to chug the rest of this. See you on the next video, bye-bye.